The word performance is an important word in the music business. Yes, I know, we all think we know what that word means, singing and playing. But in the music business, the word performance has a very special and legal definition that we must learn. It means mechanical or live playing of music in public areas. For example, when you hear music in a stereo in a restaurant, that's a public performance of the music. DJs in clubs, jukeboxes and karaoke bars, and naturally, over the public airwaves, like when you're listening to the radio. Well, how about when you're in your house and you decide to just sing a song while you're alone, say in the shower? Is that a performance? No. If you sing a pop song in the shower alone, that's pretty much a freebie. But what if you invite friends over? What if you make an audience out of it? Well, if you do that, it's a party. But if you charge your friends to come in and listen to you sing, then it's a performance. You're exposed to many performances every day and you don't even think about it. For example, when you cache a website into your computer, the music you're hearing is a public performance. Music over the radio is a public performance. Anytime you're hearing music in a commercial environment, it's a performance. Anytime music protected by copyright is performed, the owners of the copyright must be paid. The companies that collect money due for performance licenses are called performing rights societies or PROs, which stands for Performing Rights Organizations. The two prevailing performing rights organizations in the United States are ASCAP and BMI. ASCAP takes in about $700 million a year and BMI about $730 million a year. How do they divide all this money up? Well, it goes into what they call a pooling system. Pop songwriters, soundtrack composers, instrumentalists, and even rap authors all go into the same pool and all their money is combined. Then they hire a team of accountants to figure out who gets how much of this $700 or $730 million a year. Now, you've probably heard that choosing between ASCAP and BMI is no different than choosing between Coke and Pepsi, that they're essentially the same thing. Well, let's take a look at that. Both companies do something in common. They hire people to listen to the radio, watch television, and then keep logs of all the music that they hear. When they put music into a motion picture, the editor keeps a log of that. That log goes to ASCAP and BMI. When that movie is broadcast over the public airwaves, like on television, the writers, composers, and publishers get paid. But here's where they separate. ASCAP has what's called a waiting formula. It takes the number of listeners times the number of plays for that particular quarter, those four-month periods. This equals a number of credits. The number of credits gets divided by the total amount of money in the large pool. That's the $700 million. And that equals how much money you'll get paid. BMI uses a slightly different formula called a statistical multiplier. It takes the types of plays and multiplies them by the number of plays. And that equals the number of credits. The credits are then divided by the number of past credits that you've earned in their system. And then that is divided by the total amount of money in their $730 million pool. So, is choosing between ASCAP and BMI no different than choosing between Coke and Pepsi? Well, let's see. In ASCAP, if you got a hit, you get a split. In other words, it doesn't matter if you've had hundreds and hundreds of hits last year or the year before or the year before that. If you didn't have a hit this year, you don't get any money. But BMI has a different system. In their system, your credits accrue over time. So, if you had hits over the last few years, but maybe this year you were shoved out because of some new kids on the block, you can still get some money. So in BMI, if you're new to the game, your check might be lame. But if you once had a hit, you can still get a split. As you can probably imagine, some people in this pool system are doing very, very well, while others are literally drowning with a lead weight tied to their ankle. Who does well? Pop songwriters? Rap authors do extremely well. Soundtrack composers and instrumentalists tend not to do as well. By way of an example, for every one dollar that pop songwriters and rap authors make, soundtrack composers or instrumentalists, for the exact same use, might make only 35 cents. So, you might say, this doesn't seem very fair. Well, along comes CSAC. I guess we can call them the Royal Crown Cola of performing rights organizations. CSAC takes in about 65 million dollars a year. They don't use a pooling system and replace it with something called broadcast data systems. BDS, as it's called, uses digital samples to scan the airwaves and find songs. For every song it finds, it credits six cents. 
For every song of yours that got played, you get paid. This seems incredibly fair. So one might say, why doesn't everybody just go to CSEC? Well, anyone can join ASCAP or BMI. They will never refuse anyone's application. But CSEC is by invitation only. This is only the tip of the iceberg in what I have to teach you about performing rights organizations and which one you should join. In the full workshop, we go into great detail about all of these revenue streams and how to get the most money out of each of them.